power from polarity A to uh, B. And I get that you would hear a completely different sound in the uh, in the bass because I can see it looking at the rounded uh, waveform change. But the peak power in position B is only about two thirds of what it is in A. And yes, I need some uh, need some work on the very high end of this. I'm I'm pounding it. It's a little bit, uh, it's like a Frank Zappa guitar solo right now. I know that. I'm doing that on purpose. But thank you. And there you go. So, you know where I'm going with this, Billy. Oh, yeah. And real quick, before you give it away, let me make some uh, guesses here. Position A is out of phase. Position B is in phase. Is that it? Uh, most positive peaks in position B is less positive peaks. So, let me do it again. Since you're recording this, and this is going to be on YouTube, okay? This is W2VW on Beachwood Mountain in position A. Position A, hello. There we had a little lamb. Uh, COVID-19. All right, here's position B. Position B is like really rounded looking stuff, and I'm trying not to... Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. I don't like to go because it makes you sound dumb. But anyway, here's position B. Position B is... Man, the peak power looks like crap on the scope. And let me look over at the... Hello. Modulator, and I don't see a... I don't see the clip light or anything. And I go back over to uh, uh, position A. I can just get in the clip light on uh, position A. Mary had a little lamp. Is, is that enough for you? So you're telling me that, like, most of your positive peak energy is in, like, the low? No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. That's a Clark thing. You have to remember that you are transmitting a bandwidth, and you have to consider the aggregate of the bandwidth. You can't say most of my positive peaks are in the low. It doesn't work like that. You've got to sit there, you know, if, if you don't get the uh, higher math, you, you can sit there and you can draw out a bunch of sine waves and you can add the vectors. You can do like uh, 20, 30, 50, 100 of them and you can see what happens. You can't say my 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 audio is out of phase at 400 hertz but it's in phase at 200 hertz it doesn't work like that you have to consider the whole entire vector sum of the bandwidth hmm so that whole email clark sent me was it's not right well, I know Clark has a different way of thinking about this, and Clark thinks that audio is, can be in or out of phase at different frequencies, and it does appear that way. And if, if Clark is, is humming a certain frequency, it's mostly that frequency, but has Clark stuck a sine wave in there? No, he's humming a frequency. It, 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 there's fundamental harmonics, there's bandwidth. You're hitting the system with audio, which is not a damn sine wave. It's the vector sum of a bunch of different sine waves, and it doesn't look the same in both polarities. Asymmetry. Well, yeah, of course it's going to be asymmetric. So I should take the time and uh, and draw this out for people. I should, but who knows? W two very weekend at ten ten.
Do you know where your dog is? Yeah, damn, I've been recording too, and I don't have any notch filters or anything in. Uh, I'm listening to a 10kc, so you can go and watch it on, on YouTube and rewind it back. For another perspective, but anyway, I said I was getting out of here. I am. Uh, I was just wrapping crap up here and finishing writing an email. And, but now I'm really getting out of here. But either way, it sounds good. Very interesting discussion. And I've definitely learned something. 7 3, I'm out. W3 more. Oh, I see Perry. So, Dave, you're telling me that if I want to observe, you know, my envelope and process it in order to like determine the proper polarity for my audio I would have to widen the bandwidth and flatten everything out to really see what's going on like you can't just um, stick like an all-pass filter in there good night Perry and thanks I'm gonna listen to that <clears throat> well I'm over the lawn or something in my hi-fi headphones and I'll be like, who is this jackass? I'll be listening to myself. And I'll think, somebody doesn't like me. I can understand why. Thank you. Uh, no, an all-pass filter is an easy way to make different program material manageable for an unmanned broadcast transmitter. To use a all-pass filter on amateur radio, to me, it's a step in between how somebody sounds, and if you're on AM, you want to sound like you sound in person, unless you're a jackass, and then you want to sound bigger than you are in person. We know about that. It's not something you want to put between you and the system. Unless you've got tons of different program material, you got the traffic, you got the news, you got the local talent, you might play a song. Okay, you can use an all-pass filter. But it sounds like dog crap. And I've heard all-pass filters make normal, healthy Americans sound like... Um, they need help. So, like, if you're going to run an amateur station and it's going to be the same guy talking every day and you don't change anything, you don't change your processing, this and that, uh, you can get better results by doing just that, processing your audio with, like, maybe, I don't know, like, multiband dynamics something like that in other words like it it's it it's not an upgrade well listen if i were in the am radio business which is of course circling the drain but if i were in the am radio business i might consider having a all pass filter in my system so that i can maintain standards with nobody running the board and just a bunch of automated crap <clears throat> and some guy with a, uh, an iPhone somewhere in India who can say okay you have a problem you know but if I really really cared about quality and say I had some talent who were uh, well known from uh, maybe some guy who retired from TV and he's doing some radio or a real well known voice I would not screw up that person's voice with a freaking all-pass filter. It's like a cheap fix. Well, uh, you heard it here. That it makes sense to me. I mean, I don't use them. I had better results with just, you know, tweaking. The, the processing I get going on here sounds great for my voice. If I run music through it, eh. If I run somebody else's voice through it, eh. But it's like... I could optimize it uh, better without that thing, with just my voice. So that that's really what you're trying to say, I guess. Um, 
why would you use a band-aid like an all-pass filter when you don't have that issue when it's just one guy with one voice in one system all the time yeah it makes sense yeah and for those who might be listening somewhere or in the archives or whatever an all-pass filter is this uh, you know it's a black box where your real audio goes in and what comes out is symmetrical waveforms with what used to be your audio. It's still you, but it's not quite you. That's what I was waiting for. Feedback. I do appreciate that. I try to be clear. And if I'm not clear, somebody needs to let me know. I didn't know it was an active filter. Good evening, W2B.